Hello guys, so this is going to be a very interesting video on uh, homography. So we are going to see homography now. So uh, we saw the affine uh, transform in my previous video and we saw how it came from the similarity transform. So we basically, so affine is a very general case of similarity. This is what we saw in my previous video. So now let us go to homography. So homography is a more general form of affine. So it is going to deal with some of these. So these are 0, 0, 1. So we are going to see how can we uh, use these things also in homography. So we'll see that. So before we go there, you, you can see over here this. So you can see that this is the same image. This is the original image. And on this image, I have applied some transformation to make this like this. Similarly, on this image, I have applied some transformation to make it like this. So, you can see that this 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 thing and this thing looks like it is uh, like in 3D. So, this has been tilted in the uh, in some direction that is the Z direction if we, if we say. So, that is what homography can give you. So this is something that homography can give you and affine cannot give you. So let us see how we can do, we can achieve this using homography. Let us, let us see that. So this is affine. So these were the notations that I used in my previous video because I wanted a good clarity that which is scaling and which is the shearing and translation etc. But in general people write affine like this. So it has a11, a12, a3 and, and the story. So when I when I form equations out of this, there'll be something like this. So x dash is a11 plus a11x plus a12y plus a23. Y dash is a21x plus a22y plus a23. So that is what we have. Now, if you see, if suppose I want this kind of a mapping, if this is my input image and I want an output image which is something like this. So you, you see that there is uh, some more uh, things that we need to do. See, uh, suppose this, uh, if you see this particular line over here, this uh, lower bottom line, this is like having a slope of zero. But over here, if you see, it has some, some different slope. It does not have a slope of zero. So that, that gives you an intuition that there is something that, is not similarity of course because similarity has angles all uh, what we say preserved but this is uh, this is not at all 90 degree right but then it is not also affine because here the parallelism is also not preserved so you can see these two lines are parallel this is parallel to this but in the output image these two lines are not parallel you see you see it will in intersect somewhere if i extend it so this is definitely not affine, this is something else. So what what it can be? So that is homography. So what we have done in homography is we have used all the, uh, all the uh, numbers that are in the matrix that is possible. And uh, so these, uh, please note that I have changed this notation to x double dash, why I'll tell you in a minute. So if we form equations out of these, they will look like these. So x double dash is h11x plus h12 plus h23. Uh, oh, there is a simple typo error. This is 13 over here. So yeah, it is 13 over here. Simple typo error. Sorry. So that is what we have. Now, what homography tells is the actual transformation that is the actual x dash that you want in your output image is nothing but this x double dash that is this thing upon w so this is the actual uh, homography transform that we have so these uh, by the way these this particular form of writing an equation is called homogeneous uh, equation form so I, I did not mention this in my previous videos. So wherever you have written this x, y, 1, you have inserted a pseudo third dimension. So this is actually not the z dimension, but something pseudo, something false. So that is something just to incorporate the translation vectors or something else. So this thing 
uh, this particular form of writing the equation is called the homogeneous form so this is the homogeneous form so uh, now what what actually we do in uh, homogeneous is so we can see that actual output is nothing but x dash upon one so that one as does, does not have some significance hence it is okay over here but then over here it is like you have to you have to use them right and you cannot have a third dimension for w so what what we do is we have x double dash upon w so we divide uh, this thing by the w equation so this is what we do so what what does this do actually is this adds some more dependency of the space of the xy space into the output uh, image so here you can see that these are going inside so when when say in the input image when the x is increasing this side so we have putting some more dependency which is dividing by x which is like telling him that whenever this is going this side that means you should go up also along with right so that is something that uh, it is doing so see we are adding this dependency of x to both x and y so this is the output coordinates of x dash that is uh, output coordinates of my output image coordinates of output image x dash is my coordinate of output image y dash is my coordinate of output image and this is x and y are the coordinates of my input image so this is the whole gist of the uh, homography uh, transform uh, in a quite nutshell so i have not uh, derived why we do this but i have given a little bit intuition on what is uh, what is it doing and how how does it try to transform a little bit intuition so here you can see i have talked about the invariant quantities in my previous video so we saw in affine we just have a uh, collinearity and parallelism so affine preserves parallelism anything that is parallel any lines that are parallel in uh, input image for affine will be parallel in the output image but that is gone so in homography there is no parallelism constraint also here you can see that uh, the lines that are parallel in the input image are not parallel in the output image so that is about homography now let us go to desmos and try to visualize all these things in it so this is desmos oh yes i tried to use the dark mode this time so please let me know in the comments uh, do you like the dark mode or the light mode for desmos so i i found this a uh, little better so i am using this dark mode of desmos for visualizing this thing so let us see what i have done over here so uh, this is my matrix so it is a 3 cross 3 matrix as we saw in the ppt so this is the matrix and i have done some things over here so this you need not touch this is just uh, something so that i can do this so these you need not touch the only things that you can play with is this matrix so this matrix things are nothing but the values of these h1 to h2 and h h13 and, and the story so there are some things that you already know so you know that the diagonal elements h11 h22 these two are for scaling so hence i have also named them so h11 and h22 you can see they are for scaling so this this we know now h33 this is a new thing that we have uh, seen over here now if you if you see the ppt if suppose i have h31 and h32 both of these as zero both of these as zero and just h33 so you can see that h33 is also somewhat a scaling kind of thing because this does not have any spatial x or y coordinates so this is also some kind of a scaling and that is actually what it is doing so h33 is scaling in both the dimensions so it is scaling both the dimensions simultaneously so h22 just scaling in y h11 just scaling in x and h33 scaling in both the dimensions so that is what is h33 simple now let us we have also seen this shearing thing in affine so the h12 and h21 h12 and h21 both of these are uh, nothing but the shearing quantities that we also saw in affine so these are also the same the the 
they see her in X and Y. They see her in. Oops, I forgot to make this zero. So you can play this. I'll put this uh, in the description below. You can yourself play and find out beautiful things out of this. So this is uh, also something that we know. That that is shearing. Oh, this is not happening. Zero. Yeah. And the beauty of homographic transform and translation. We also know translation, right? So the beauty of homographic transform lies over here. So that lies in these two things. That is H31 and H32. This is the beauty of homography. Let us see. So what does H31 do? So H31 is over here. Let us see what does H31 do. So H31, if you see, it is doing this. So this is exactly what uh, we saw in the PPT. So in the PPT, you can see that when this image got transformed to this, so it is like it is going in the uh, in the Z direction, if I say. So in the Z direction. So that is that is actually what this is doing. So this was my input image. It was like this. And as I increase the H31, you can see that it is it is like moving in the Z direction. So that is precisely a homographic transform. So you can see it over here. And if suppose you want to do it the other side, you can do that by negative. And if suppose you want to do in the Y direction, you can do it by H32. So this is doing it in the Y direction, so you can see. Also, you can see that these lines are no longer parallel now. You can see the distance over here is greater and the distance over here is lesser. So this is the beauty of a homographic transform. So in a homographic transform, you have everything. You can do scaling, you can do rotation. So uh, by rotation, you will have to find out that quantities of shear to do the rotation. So if suppose you do this, and then a little bit of y in the opposite direction so you can see you have rotated it uh, somewhat by some angle so you can do rotation you can do translation you can do 3d movement of a plane so all these quantities you are able to achieve by the homography so this is the one of the beautiful insights of homography so I'll share you this uh, graph. You can also play with it. So that's all for this video. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you.